Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rahman Dust Mohammadi. I'm a research faculty at Rice University. Uh, and today I would like to actually talk about a recently started project Magma ML, which is a joint project with uh, Ashu Sabarwal, also from Rice. And Magma ML is actually about uh, automated management uh, for low resource uh, 5G cellular network deployments. Um, so one of the biggest challenges in actually cellular network management for mobile network operators is troubleshooting the network. So whenever a problem happens, occurs in the network, uh, these problems um, may sometimes require field tests. And if that's the case, these kind of problems may take hundreds of man hours to fix. And this by itself adds billions of dollars to the operational expenditure of, of MNOs every year. So um, this um, problem could uh, get even more difficult and uh, get even worse um, um, by deployment of even more complex networks, um, including 5G networks. Uh, in particular, um, in the next generation of networks, we're going to densify the networks that create more problems. And then uh, we're also going to deploy even more complex technologies such as massive MIMO, and uh, that could complicate the problems even further. And these kind of problems could even be more pronounced in low resource networks where usually they are deployed in hard to reach areas and uh, simply the lack of experienced people to fix the problems uh, on site uh, exacerbate the problem. So now the question is whether the research community can help. Um, and one of the uh, most immediate uh, solutions that can come to mind is like, why not use machine learning to uh, sort of be able to uh, uh, sort of watch the network, probe the network proactively and detect these problems and be able to diagnose the problems. So usually to be able to do that, we need labeled data sets uh, to be able to uh, train models, uh, to be able to sort of uh, automatically come up with a cause of these issues. Um, but it turns out that the sort of uh, this sort of data and data sets is something that is um, uh, privately uh, owned by the mobile network operators uh, and not usually open source. And um, even if they are, they're often limited um, by the sort of like the information um, that is exposed by the hardware that those MNOs are actually deploying. So um, it turns out there are actually some new possibilities uh, in, in, in these days, uh, particularly with the proliferation of city scale wireless test beds powered by software defined radios. Um, this could actually help us to, uh, to some extent, alleviate uh, this problem, uh, as well as the existence of uh, uh, a lot of open source software out there, such as um, uh, Magma Core Network, which is actually the focus of uh, this community, as well as OAI Radio Access Networks, SRS LTE, and so on. So uh, uh, as far as the city scale wireless test beds goes, there are multiple of them uh, right now being deployed in the United States, such as Powder Renew and Cosmos, which are sponsored by the National Science Foundation. Uh, there are some other ones that are being uh, funded by the Department of Defense. And there are several other ones that are being deployed in, in Europe and Asia as well. So with all of this, there's a possibility to kind of be able to learn uh, uh, to diagnose the, the cellular network problems by sort of uh, using these facilities to sort of uh, uh, put the network in certain states, which actually uh, can uh, cause uh, certain uh, issues and observe those network states uh, and then the, the bad performance and the KPI related to that performance and create this sort of data sets. So I'm gonna talk about this a little bit uh, further down the slides. So just go back to the city scales and give you a little bit of background on this. Um, so as I said, there are multiple of, of these test beds are being deployed. I'm gonna uh, briefly talk about two of these test beds that we are kind of involved with as well. So one is the Renew 
uh, test bed, which is actually at Rice, and uh, another one powder test bed at the University, University of Utah. Um, so Rice Renew is actually sort of a project that has been going on uh, since 2017, 18. And um, the goal for this was to actually deploy uh, a massive MIMO software-defined radio platforms around Rice campus. Uh, and um, this actually has been uh, done. Uh, currently, there are four uh, massive MIMO base stations are deployed on different uh, building sites on, on Rice campus, as you see in the pictures on the right side of the slides. Uh, and then these are 3.5 gigahertz um, software-defined radio uh, base stations, um, 96 antennas uh, and 64 antenna base stations. And this sort of like uh, uh, the world's first uh, um, testbed of its kind, actually. And the other one is actually a pow the, is the powder testbed, which is actually being deployed at the University of Utah. And this is actually a public testbed, as opposed to the rice testbed, which is actually private. And it uses a uh, 2.5 gigahertz variant of the Renew hardware and is deploying it uh, on, on this campus. And um, uh, on top of that, uh, there are a lot of other base station and client uh, software-defined radios are being deploy deployed, which have uh, between two to four antennas on each of them as well. Um, so this actually, all of this gives us like the sort of like the infrastructure that we need to uh, run, run the network uh, that we need. And then uh, on, uh, we have open source uh, radio access network software that I mentioned. Um, some examples of them are uh, open air interface and SRS LTE uh, that this uh, community might be, uh, are probably like familiar with. However, these software is not, are not really well tested in the field. Uh, they're open source and uh, they have their own community, uh, but they still have a long way to go in terms of uh, become, becoming completely operational in the field. And on top of that, they don't have some of the features of the next generation uh, um, networks, cellular technology, such as massive MIMO. Um, so another uh, sort of RAN software that we are currently involved in, we're developing is called, uh, is the Renew Radio, Radio Access Network. Um, and um, so Renew is essentially an, uh, still under development, currently include the, only the physical layer for massive MIMO. Uh, well, uh, it could also support essentially from four antennas all the way to 64 antennas. I'm going to talk about uh, this. Uh, a particular software in a little bit. It's called Agora. And then development of layer two and layer three to uh, make it a full stack radio access network is underway as well. And the good thing about this, uh, the software is that it's coupled to the Renew hardware, which is actually a fully observable hardware. That means that a lot of um, sort of uh, configuration of the hardware is, uh, is, is observable to the users and it could be actually kind of harvested in terms of the, uh, the data sets that we're going to um, create for diagnosing the problem. As it turns out, a lot of the problems in cellular networks are, uh, could be caused by the hardware malfunction, for example, as well. And it's always good to sort of be able to actually like uh, see what's going on in the hardware as well. So just to briefly uh, talk about Agora is, as I said, is layer one processing. If physical layer processing uh, is completely done in software, it sort of addresses this ORAN community, uh, community's open problem, um, which is actually about virtualizing massive MIMO. Um, so um, uh, Agora addresses this problem. It implements a, a real-time physical layer processing in C++ and uh, it can achieve real-time processing for 64 by 16 multi-user MIMO uh, by simply uh, running on a 36-core Intel server. So this is a work that is also, uh, last year it was uh, uh, published uh, in ACM Connect as well. So just to give you a little bit of uh, detail, like uh, there are, this is actually a plot of the latency results of Agora and it shows that um, for different number of antennas and, 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 and clients, essentially it achieves, um, um, it meets the latency requirement of 5G 
uh, enhanced mobile broadband use case, which is actually four milliseconds. So uh, Agora's latency is well below that. So going back to Magma ML, so what are the goals of Magma ML? Um, we envisage Magma ML to be sort of a management agent for um, uh, for Magma with an inference engine, which actually combines rules-based rule-based methods and uh, also trained ML models to be able to uh, first of all proactively uh, uh, look at the network, the entirety of the network, and and, and uh, the network state and KPIs, and then uh, detect faults or bad performance, uh, um, and then uh, be able to suggest fixes to those issues to the network maintainer. So these are the goals of Magma ML. So there are uh, three uh, uh, sort of big steps for the project. The, there are the project big tasks. The first task that we're actually currently uh, working on is essentially be able to uh, integrate uh, Renew RAN uh, with uh, Magma Core Network. And then uh, once that is actually achieved, uh, we're going to essentially do uh, like generate large scale data sets using these existing test tests such as the um, Renew uh, at Rice or Powder at the University of Utah, and then be able to uh, also uh, on top of that develop the uh, Magma ML software module on top of Magma. So to be able to actually give you a little bit of examples on what type of data sets we can actually collect uh, sort of immediately um, is essentially all, um, there are four examples here. One example could be that you have a network, uh, you have a base station, which is actually uh, connecting to um, a lot of users. We can actually play with high user load where the network, it saturates the network and it affects the performance of uh, uh, clients in the network. We could actually like, Mm, have a mal malfunctioning UE where it could affect the um, sort of uh, the performance of other UEs in a network, or we can actually intentionally um, sort of create an interfering node in the network that could affect the uplink and downlink performance, uh, as well as the uh, sort of configuration of the E node B or G node B and um, creating bad configurations uh, could also like affect the performance of the network as well. And while all of these scenarios are being created, we could actually measure uh, certain KPIs, um, such as uh, the data rate of the bearers, um, the retransmission rates in HARQ, BLAR uh, block error rate, and, and, and so on. And, and the hope is that once we create these like preliminary data sets, uh, as the network is being uh, sort of deployed elsewhere, um, like more data sets can be added to the uh, added to this as well um, by the community. And looking at uh, looking at the system architecture, essentially the Magma ML would be uh, sort of part of the Magma orchestrator uh, as a microservice to it, and it could essentially be used to do um, a lot of different things, such as let's say fault injection and learning from those faults. So essentially the, the process of creating the data sets that I just talked about, as well as like tools to uh, sort of be able to infer um, those, those faults uh, and be able to fix, suggest fixes to the, to the user as well. So to summarize, um, uh, automating cellular networks, uh, network, network cellular network management and troubleshooting is highly needed, uh, especially for uh, low resource networks uh, that, are go that are going to be uh, deployed. Um, we have uh, open source software and open access test beds uh, at our disposals uh, that uh, it pro they provide a path for us to achieve this goal. And then Magma ML uh, would essentially equip Magma with an engine that could essentially do this automated fault discovery and recovery. Uh, so that's it for me, and uh, thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you so much. Um, I believe we have Raman on the call, and we have um, maybe a minute or two. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to uh, get off mute and ask them. So Ramad Prakash here again. Uh, 
question to you since uh, you have mentioned this is more to do with the ml uh, ml comes post installation or do you want us to support during the installation itself um so um yeah i think this could be essentially both ways um so um this is something that we can actually um uh, i guess we can actually like look at offline data sets where uh, we can actually look at uh, certain problems that occur like in, in terms of let's say power control, power um, setting issues, gain issues that could happen, for example, uh, in the networks that, you, that are based on software defined radios, things like that. Uh, or yeah, of course it could be certain uh, things that could be learned online that could be also part of the problem. But I think our first focus is to be able to look at uh, these offline data sets and build certain tools that can be integrated in magma. So there is a possibility of pre-provisioning usage once your model is ready. Um, sorry, can you repeat your question? So, so you have obviously data you should collect post installation and then you have a model. If the model is ready, then we may be able to use it at a later stage for. Right, yeah, I guess like it's a, uh, uh, both uh, take do, both things are, are kind of necessary because obviously as you deploy networks in different environments there could be issues that are coupled with the environment that they uh, they are uh, in uh, so obviously uh, uh, simply offline data sets may not be um, um, sufficient yeah okay sufficient. hello so yeah I have a question like uh, when we work on the data set mostly offline, uh, so we have a, a thing called data analysis. So we perform data data analysis on that part. So after performing the data analysis, we get some insights. So in that we can get null hypothesis or some values which are not there. And we did it those stuff. And there are some columns uh, which we are actually interested in. For example, power consumption, then energy requirement, MCS calculation, uh, even the modulation coding schemes and SNR, etc. So those uh, those columns which we are interested, we can actually work on that. And uh, uh, we also for a live network, then we need a data set which actually matches this column. Otherwise, when we build that model, it won't uh, actually be useful, right? So that may be a problem then. Hello? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, this is actually by itself is uh, sort of a research uh, it's a big research area as well. So I understand there are actually a lot of questions like that that could come up. Um, but I guess like, um, yeah, so I think the, the, we could actually like divide this project into two sections, the research part, which is actually could come with more deployments. Um, and a, a lot of these issues, we can actually understand them as we deploy. Uh, the other part is the engineering part of it, where we actually can um, sort of develop this um, sort of uh, additional features in Magma as part of Magma ML. Um, so I understand, yeah, so there's, there are a lot of issues like that, but I think- Because uh, when we use edge devices and we, we use edge nodes, so we can get data which is not relevant and there can be some part uh, which right. is actually uh, like error rate. So error rate right. can be quite high at such times. So I, in order I, to I agree. So I think the, the space is very huge in terms of where the problem can happen. So if a problem can happen let's say in, in the core network, the problem can happen in various layers of the, um, the, um, the RAN, uh, the RAN software, for example, there could be a lot of software bugs and so on. So obviously this is actually like uh, not an easy problem to solve, uh, but um, I guess uh, we could start with certain, uh, <clears throat> let's say in terms of massive MIMO, we can actually uh, start looking at certain issues, like let's say the power. Um, that could be, let's say, the start of it and collecting, uh, because the thing is one of the features of the next generation is that a lot of them are not necessarily planned that work. Whereas traditionally we used to have a lot of planned systems uh, and a lot of interference issues could arise. So that could be a particular uh, a dimension that we can look at and try to collect data set on that area. Yeah, so uh, but, I actually got it. The thing is that first we have we should have a vision, like what exactly we needed, and then we should divide that magma into two parts. One is the data analysis part, which is the research part, 
and one is the implementation so we need to work like that right yeah i definitely agree with that yeah so i think yeah definitely we're going to uh, take that stepped approach and look at uh, certain problems first and then essentially move on so i guess this is actually i guess this is a start of it and we're hoping that later on it could turn into something that a lot of people can um, uh, collaborate and you know create more advanced data sets more advanced models yeah thanks Roman, just a, a question on, on that and probably related to that uh, comment. Have you looked into the ETL process to, you know, do the proper feature engineering to create these models? Do you have a stack in mind or that's still on the works? That's actually still on the works. We're actually looking into solutions, like I said in the, in the uh, presentation, uh, to kind of be able to integrate with Magma. I think that's going to be our first step, which is to, to, going to take a lot of time. But at the same time, we can actually start uh, collecting the data sets uh, as we speak. Uh, this is something that, for example, we have a lot of channel data sets that we can look into in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, intercell interference, pilot contamination, things like that. Uh, we can learn from those and, and start creating these data sets. And then I guess uh, later, hopefully uh, later this year, we can start uh, looking into the actual implementation uh, of Magma ML and, and the integration with Magma. Okay. And, and on the machine learning portion, uh, what algorithms or what kind of models are you planning to implement like XGBoost and normal you know, decision right. tree stuff, or, or have you decided that or still also? Right. I mean, the thing is, as I, I guess mentioned earlier, there are so, so many things that you can do. For example, if you're looking at, uh, let's say, power control in, in uh, sort of multi-cell networks, you can actually look at uh, deep learning models even. Like you can train models in, term, in, in terms of, uh, um, you know, what kind of problems could occur like that. But like mostly like you could actually look at simpler things like regression and um, Regression, simple regression models, for example, that could be like one thing to start. Uh, but yeah, definitely not something that uh, uh, um, you know it's 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 still to be figured out. 